Kelvin in 2020 has been a huge problem for Pokemon collectors. Hidden Fates, Champions Path ETBs, Food Voltage has all been extremely difficult to pick up at retail. Well, 2021 is about to get a lot worse because a new scalp bot and scalping community are targeting trading cards, specifically Pokemon, and they've announced that their software works with two of the major UK retailers that sells Pokemon. In today's video, I'm gonna break down what this means and stick around because I'm gonna share some tips that will hopefully help you pick up the cards you want at retail for RRP and avoid paying those scalpers prices. Let's get ready, shreddy and go straight in to today's video. Are you ready for shreddy? So let's straight away start off today's video by taking a look at this new scalping bot and scouting community that have announced that they're focusing on the trading card market by some of the tweets that they've posted. So this is the account here, it's called Carnage Bot. It's a bot set up to crawl the internet, find out when items are back in stock, that pings out a message to members of a group who pay money to be part of that community so that these people can then go on and buy the stock from whatever websites they've just been alerted about. So the message reads, collectibles will be the main focus for Carnage, focusing on the major UK and EU sites. We will remain to be the number one UK and EU toy bot. So they then later revealed that Chaos Cards is a new site supported by the bot. So what does this mean for me and you? Well, it means that this bot will be able to crawl the Chaos Cards website whenever a new item is listed as back in stock or whenever a new item is listed on the website and is available to buy. This bot will send out a automated message to however many members are part of this group and there's other scalp bots out there that have thousands of members paying 25 30 pounds a month to take part they will receive a notification to say chaos cards has got pokemon hidden fate etvs back in stock they'll then rush over to the website buy them out literally almost immediately so your normal collectors don't have chance to buy them i also saw something online the other day that said magic madhouse was going to be part of the um, this bot as well, but I just can't find the screenshot for that. Of course, the ideas of scalping isn't exclusive to Pokemon. It's been around for ages. Most recently, the biggest craze for scalpers was the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, with the PS5 being sold for close to $2,000 the day of release. Still, we can't get hold of PS5s in the UK because scalpers keep buying them to keep trying to sell them on the secondary market for inflated prices. So while scalping isn't unique to Pokemon, let's explore how this new scalp bot will affect Pokemon. And I'm going to give you some tips about how you can prevent being stung by these scalp prices. So I also want to talk about this false sense of popularity and this false sense of demand. Because scalpers are buying up a large portion of Pokemon cards to purely sell on for a higher price, is there actually as much demand there from the actual collectors and from the actual consumers? Or is this artificial hype and artificial demand created purely by the scalpers? What does this mean? Well, let's take scalpers out of the equation for a minute. Pokemon is popular, of course, but is the demand there that would sell out and make it so your genuine collectors can't get hold of this product? I don't know if there is. I genuinely believe that the demand is being inflated because of the boom that we're seeing with vintage cards and the prices climbing, the Logan Pauls, the celebrities jumping into the space. I think you're seeing a lot of people kind of assuming, oh, well, if old Pokemon cards are going up in price, modern Pokemon cards are going up in price. So what you're seeing is a mix of people buying modern booster boxes, modern sealed products such as ETVs, and putting it away as an investment. And when I say that people are buying these, they're buying them by the case loads. So not just buying one, they're buying a case, thinking in five years, 10 years time, the price will go up so they can sell it on. On the flip side of that, we also have the scalpers who know Pokemon is popular, so they're also buying up a lot of stock 
purely to sell on and flip on eBay, on Facebook, wherever it might be, for an increased price and a quick profit. Because you have these two groups buying Pokemon cards, there's obviously less available for the actual collector who wants to just go in, open some packs, add it to their collection. The easiest way to solve the problem of scalpers is if the average collector, so people like me, people like you, just don't buy the inflated prices. If nobody was going on eBay and buying these products at an increased price, then the scalpers would be selling them at retail value, and it would probably put them off selling at all. Because let's say you're a scalper, and you go and buy a new product that's 50 pounds, and you're selling that on eBay. Let's say if none of us would purchase that from the scalper, for him to sell that on eBay, he gets 50 pounds, but then they also have to pay eBay fees, PayPal fees, they're actually making a loss on that. So if the average collector just refused to pay the scalping prices, then we wouldn't be in a position where scalpers were even dominating the market and there would be plenty. That is of course assuming that my theory behind Pokemon demand kind of fits in and kind of is right. But it's just my opinion, I don't know. I've said a few times that I think Pokemon is modern Pokemon cards. You have probably, I genuinely think more adults buying than what you do kids, but I have no data to back that up. I can only go by what I'm seeing online, on YouTube, on Facebook and on Instagram. And then judging by what my nephew is into or my nephews are into, Pokemon doesn't seem to be this crazy mega popular thing like it was back in 99 and 2000 when I was a kid. But it's just my opinion, it's just my thoughts. I can't back that up with data, unfortunately. So take what I'm saying with a pinch of salt, think about it and make your own opinion. So how else can you avoid paying the scalping prices and get your Pokemon cards at retail value? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple of quick tips here. They might sound basic, but a lot of people that I speak to don't really do this. So hopefully it helps you out. And if it does help you out, then please hit that thumbs up button and drop a comment down below. Share this video as well with fellow collectors so hopefully none of us end up paying those scalpers prices. Okay, so first up, pretty basic. If you know there is a set coming out that you definitely want, pre-order it. And when I say pre-order it, don't just pre-order it from one site, pre-order it from multiple sites. As collectors, we tend to open up more than one Ellie Trainer box, more than one booster pack. So it always makes sense to have a couple of packs or boxes to open to add to your own collection. So my advice to you would be, Pre-order whatever product you want. Let's say it's a new Elite Trainer box. Pre-order it from one website, then go on to another website and place a pre-order as well. The reason I'm telling you to pre-order it on more than one website is because if one website cancels your pre-order because they've oversold and they're not getting enough stock in on their own order, then hopefully the other sites that you've ordered from will have it in stock and will be able to fulfill that order. From my experience, I find that the smaller shops don't really inflate the prices, but everyone's different, so you're gonna to have to just do a little bit of digging around to find who the best retailers are who actually sell at RRP. Next up is click and collect. So in lockdown at the minute, we can walk into stores, but you have shops like Smith's Toy Store open for click and collect. So what you can do is place your order and go and collect it from the store. Doing a click and collect, you know in advance before you get to the shop if they're going to have any in stock and then you kind of secure your order, you pay for it and you go and pick it up. Now what you might have to do here is get in the habit of checking daily, maybe he's checking multiple times a day because remember there is a bot out there who's crawling the internet looking for these updates but if you're on the ball and if it's something that you really want, you can just set your reminders, you can just check a couple of times a day, get your click and collect in and go and pick it up. The next one, and for any product that I've wanted in 2020, I've not had a problem whatsoever doing this just walk into a store on the day of release again because of lockdown that might be difficult at the moment but when lockdown is lifted literally you can walk into a smith's a game whatever shop it's going to be that sells pokemon cards you can walk in and buy product on the day i've had no problem whatsoever buying hidden fates last year from game shops and from forbidden planet the comic shop i had no problem buying champions path on the day of release when that first came out if you are supporting local independent stores as well then just get to know the owner or a member of staff and give them a call once a week however often to check on when the stock is coming in or if they've had a delivery and if you get a relationship with a member of staff there they might be able to put one aside for you and you know hold it for you until you get in the last bit of advice is i'm going to repeat it i've already said this 
don't buy from scalpers. If you don't pay the prices that somebody is listing something for on eBay or on Facebook, and if everybody sticks to this mentality, then the scalpers won't be able to sell them for these, you know, higher prices. That's easier said than done because somebody out there is going to be so desperate they're willing to pay 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds over retail for one of these boxes. But in an ideal world, this method would work. So that's it for today's video, guys. Please do let me know because I'm interested to hear what do you think about the current level of demand for Pokemon? Do you think Pokemon is so hot and scalpers are jumping on it because it is so hot? Or do you think that the combination of long-term investors and scalpers are kind of creating this false buzz around modern because of how successful vintage Pokemon cards and how successful the vintage Pokemon card market has been and how much it's grown over 2020? Let me know down in the comments below. Your opinion might differ to mine. That's fine. We can have a discussion about it down in the comments. If this video has helped, then please do force push that thumbs up button and subscribe for more Pokemon videos from Shreddy. If you're looking to grow your collection on a budget, then I have a great video telling you exactly how you can collect Pokemon for cheap. It's on screen now, so be sure to go and check that out. But until next time, remember that Pokemon card collecting ain't no gimmick, it's a lifestyle. <laughs>